Today's scripture reading brings us to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. I have a handful of verses here to share with you uh, on this 28th day of our Second Mile Fellowship. We're going to begin in verse number 4. Verse number four says this. It says, They that forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. So those that forsake the law of God, who care not about his standards and what he has set, well, they'll praise the wicked. And you see that. You look at our celebrity culture today, And what is it? It is celebrity worship. And what are the celebrities doing? Listen, they're not, they're not out reading their Bible and telling people about Jesus. They're out sleeping with each other, showing their rear ends and, um, smoking the dope and, you know, just doing all the, all the crazy things of this world. And they're getting praise. They're lavished praise, uh, upon them. Um, but, but, verse number four, such as keep the law contend with them. That word contend means to fight against. We Christians, we should not be in the business of the hero worship on the celebrities. We should be contending against wickedness and those that are promoting wickedness. We should fight against it. Should not be something that we excuse. Should not be something that we're okay with but we should fight against such ungodliness. Next, we're going to look there at verse number five. Evil men understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things. As I read this verse, what I thought about was the old adage, well, how could a loving God send people to hell? You know, how many times have you heard that? Let me ask you this. How many times have you heard that from a righteous person? How many times have you heard that from someone that seeks the Lord or understands anything about the things of God? You don't. And the reason you don't is because um, if they're seeking the Lord, they understand the judgment. So I want to read that one more time. Evil men understand not the judgment. They don't understand how a loving God can bring down judgment upon sin. But the thing about it is, it's, it's, again, it's very simple. God judges sin because sin is ungodly, and a just God must punish sin. And then you couple that with the fact that our Heavenly Father sent His only begotten Son to this earth so that men might put their faith in him and be born again to escape the judgment. He sent judgment upon his only begotten son so that we might escape it. So when you think that a just God has to punish sin and God did everything up, including sending his only begotten son to pay for our sin, uh, it makes perfect sense why if anyone would reject such a gift as that, that they absolutely deserve the judgment of God. Everything else set to the side. If you reject what Jesus has offered unto you, you every bit deserve the judgment of God. So uh, there's that verse number five. Verse number six, better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness than he that is perverse in his ways, though he be rich. It's better to not have anything but have integrity than have everything and have it not. All right, Uh, verse number nine. I want you to see a hindrance to prayer right here. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. There's many things that hinder our prayers. This is one of them. For those that turn away their ear from hearing the divine law of God, Uh, their prayer is an abomination unto him. And in verse number 13, I like this. It says this, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. 
you and I, it's not just enough to confess our sins. I'm not talking about for salvation. Uh, confess our sins, but confess and forsake them. The woman caught in adultery, and uh, all the accusers left after Jesus started writing down in the sand. And he says, where are thine accusers? She said, uh, they're all gone, no man. Uh, and he said, well, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. We Christians should not be partaking of sin simply because we have been saved by grace. We should confess it and forsake it so that we'll have the mercy of God upon our lives. All right, verses 20 and 20, 20 and 22. 20 and 22. A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. And in verse number 22, he that hasteth to be rich hath an evil, evil eye. You see, that, that phrase, he that hasteth to be rich, you know, in rapid succession in these couple of verses. So why is it, why is it bad? Because of course, it's speaking it in, in a bad manner. Uh, they shall not be innocent in verse number 20. And then they have an evil eye in verse number 22. Why is that bad? Because it demonstrates if you are hasting to be rich, it demonstrates what it is you're focused on. It demonstrates what your desires are in this life. And it causes you to err in judgment. If someone is hasting to be rich, they'll cut corners or start doing things illegally in that type of uh, manner. And then uh, I have a few others, uh, 25 and 26. Uh, let me just read these for you. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife, but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. Don't follow your heart. Your heart is uh, exceedingly wicked. Uh, but whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. So a lot of good stuff in uh, a lot of good stuff in Proverbs chapter 28. We just touched on a few. And, of course, what we even did touch on, you could elaborate on so much further. And I hope that you take time to do that. And I hope that uh, your study in Proverbs has been a blessing unto you. We'll have just a few more days, and then we'll be closing it out. So God bless. Lord willing, we'll see you soon.